Yes, there some, was some news, wasn't there? Yeah, some interesting stuff uh, in the last, I think, the last week or so. Uh, mm. SpaceX have announced that they are going to fly to Mars. I mean, this has always been yeah. the plan, obviously, so it's, it's been coming. But it's actually like solid information. Yeah, some some yeah. real plans, not real just plans. nebulous kind of ideas. Yeah, they announced it. it's 2018. They're going to they're aiming for. Um, so there's a uh, so the Earth and Mars are in kind of. 26 months there's 26 months uh, intervals between the kind of efficient launch windows to get between yeah, they're close or, or the... yeah um, so 2018 is the, is the next one after this year and then like 2020 after that so like, if they don't make that 2018 launch they're gonna have to wait another two years so let's hope they actually do it and get it get it launched yeah um, it sounds so so awesome. just, just quickly it's called the called red dragon right yes isn't that the name of like Hannibal or something in one of the Hannibal books? Yeah, I think anyway, it is. anyway, um, <laughs> it wasn't that. I, I swear I've heard about the Red Dragon like idea for a while, way before they yeah. announced this. It was I think there's a Wikipedia article on it that's been around since like 2007 or something. So I think it was a NASA. It was actually a NASA proposal. Some NASA scientist at like AIM, NASA Ames or something yeah. proposed, looked at the SpaceX Dragon two and said, okay, we can make we can do the, like an, this mission to Mars using this hardware, and they called it Red Dragon. So yeah. I, I'm not actually sure if SpaceX have officially used that name in in relation to this mission. Oh, I, I'm not saying they haven't. I'm just saying I'm not sure. Okay, but it's definitely been like just generally adopted by everybody talking yes. about it, including like the media and yeah, the yeah, people yeah. on the forums and stuff. Sure, we can just call it that for now. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's been talked about for ages um, in terms of you know its feasibility and stuff. Mm. So the idea is to stick it on top of a Falcon Heavy, and and set it to Mars. And apparently with Falcon Heavy you can you can get a fully loaded Dragon 2 on the surface of Mars, which is like two to four tonnes of payload. Which is two to four tonnes is is loads. It's loads. Like the Curiosity rover is about a tonne, just under a tonne. Yeah, just under a tonne. And it was by far the largest, like most massive thing that's ever been landed on Mars. That's crazy. So if they're, if they're presumably, they, and they, I think they mentioned about delivering it to other systems, not just Mars, but other places around the solar system potentially. Yeah. It kind of has no limits to anything it can land on. No, Elon's of... like, oh, we can land anywhere in the solar system on water, on liquid or, or, or rock or whatever you want to land on, um, propulsively <sighs> land. Uh, yeah, and I guess, I guess the, farther you, the further you go, the less mass you can take with you, but you know. Or you just use you can use Falcon yeah. Heavy in like an expen fully expendable mode, so you can get it up to super high velocities and stuff. So two to four tons. We just think about that. You can obviously that's more than a Curiosity rover. That's two to four Curiosity rovers essentially yeah. plus a bit extra. Yeah. Um, the Dragon 2's design was originally or his purpose is mostly humans, right? In terms of how it how it how it works. And yeah, it's been designed around having a crew. Having yeah. a crew. So how would you? If you if you wanted to mount something like the Curiosity rover inside a Dragon capsule, it might not be possible just because of the space involved. Or yeah, it might be too large. Yeah. Um, but if you could design it around having a rover, say, in there. Yeah. Like how how does the rover does it have a, a thing that the rover can get in and out of the Dragon capsule and what and whatnot? Because uh, I mean, you know, is, gonna... there, is there a way for it to deploy instrumentation, or does yeah. it have to just sit there and, and you know it has lots of you know antenna and, and seismic things on it? If it, if it was going to act as a science sort of station, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we don't basically don't know. Presumably, you could modify it you know indefinitely to do whatever you want with it yeah you could add as a platform uh, a lift on the bottom or something that drops down yeah. and then lets something out yeah or like or like a door that's like a ramp that opens yeah. up and the rover drives out or something like that um alternatively you could have an arm that comes out and samples so have everything as a static platform a bit yeah. like phoenix which is a mars lander. yeah they didn't have a rover but that doesn't have to that's ridiculously like some two to four tons is so heavy there's so much instrumentation you get on that yeah um it yeah. might be you know, it's a, a platform, just a sitting platform. I suppose you could probably still use up all that mass, but so obviously part of the reason SpaceX, or the main well, reason SpaceX, you could stick SpaceX, a drill on it. You could stick drill. a massive drill on it. And actually, there's I'm not sure if it was That's a red a bad... dragon concept, but there's been people talking about uh, modifying it so that it has a a small rocket stage inside it that you then use as a sample return. Uh, yeah, thing. that's you know you can fit X tonnage of of the rocket fuel, fuel and, and a yeah. rocket on it. Yeah, so so you just you just send it to Mars with a little kind of scoop of or a drill of some kind, take a few samples, and then then come back to Earth. 
I mean, it sounds that sounds so cool. That's, yeah. That sounds so useful to have a, a delivery platform that's developed outside of the, you know the, these these big space agencies that you know it's a huge edit, headache to develop something like the Sky Crane. Yeah. On top of having to develop the Curiosity yeah. rover. So like almost have, every having this reliable delivery platform that you can just mount different scientific instrumentation exactly. on that's commercially produced, so it's not that expensive. Yeah. That's a godsend. It for, is a for godsend for, for the exploration of the solar system. Because now you just say, "Oh, we want we want to deploy these instruments to this place, and SpaceX will sort out everything else." And yeah. you just you just you just put the instruments in the in the lander, basically. Yeah. You know, they might need to modify it so it has a ramp or a lift to, to lower a rover or something. But yeah, yeah. So you're right. Like almost every mission that's landed on Mars has had slightly different or or drastically different entry, descent, and landing. Yeah. technology yeah i mean the sky crane for curiosity was completely different to anything they've done before. yes yeah yeah it was all so not having parachutes to... and big inflatable balls yeah, 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 yeah stuff before so not having to de- like redesign a totally new uh system like that every time you want to land a, a science payload yeah yeah it's amazing I mean, they, it's an amazing they're sort thing. of reusing the sky crane idea aren't they for the 2020 yes. rover yes um but i mean yeah it sounds ideal it sounds it sounds i, I just think it, i i just we've had to the drill a second you could get a big ass drill yeah on that yeah. the amount of space you could use up for it i mean the, the exomars drill is designed to go about a meter is it Three two meters, meters two maximum meters. two meters two meters so and that's i mean tiny tiny little thing yeah think how big a drill you could fit on yeah i mean if it's just a drill so all it has a is, drill a, is a drill and, and some way of retrieving the sample and obviously you're going to want some kind of instruments to look at the sample yes but that's all light stuff really in comparison to the actual drill itself yeah and if you've got two to four tons to play with yeah you just two get two to four tons get a drill that can go down you know sample permafrost layers or whatever it might be down there you yeah know. the only modification you'd need is a, a, like a hole that opens up essentially at the bottom of the capsule yeah yeah or you just drill through the capsule <laughs> <laughs> yeah well if it's landed it's done its job <laughs> just rinse it um, yeah, so That's who knows where that will lead? I think for this 2018 mission, there was so there was an article on I think NASA Spaceflight dot com talking about um, the fact that NASA have partnered with SpaceX, but I don't think anything's been been officially officially announced by either party about that. Mm. Um, it's just this 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 website that has said it. Um, so that, if that is true, then there's there will be some kind of science payload on this lander. Oh yes, the um, first the test one, which, yeah. the, which which SpaceX are sort of. I mean, they're obviously interested in the science, but they're using it as a kind of test flight Mars experiment yeah. to yeah, see how sure. they can do this. I mean, it's so they can do, you know, both start thinking about how to do the colonization thing yeah. that they want to do, but also to open up a whole new business area potentially. Potentially, yeah, and and I mean, it makes sense to them to try and land it fully loaded, like as heavy yeah. as possible, because you know if it can do it and they're confident that it can do it, yeah. then they should push it. It's just another another step down the road of privatizing almost all aspects of space with yeah. the instrumentation, and even the instrumentation may end up being commercially produced for these types of things. And science missions are funded to ask, you know, design and ask specific questions and have modifications done on that type of instrumentation. Yes, definitely. Um, which would make it even regard even if the instrumentation doesn't end up being that, just having a platform that that's that's like I said earlier is reliable, is consistent, is cheap. Um, yeah, it and takes... you can send stuff anywhere on it, and you really know the ins and outs of it because you've used it loads of times. Mm. Um, it takes the manufacturing of it away from being very specific, very very expensive yeah. one-off thing towards the point of it being more of a like of an assembly line type. You know, just hammer yeah. out these things. This could oh, this could take over these types of things, whether it's the Dragon Two or not. But the, these types of um, delivery produced, systems, yeah. commercially produced delivery systems, could. I mean, could could end up being the only way that we really send science missions around yeah. the solar system, and you know, we'll be much better off for it. And if it does work, as in this test mission, and then the follow up ones, that transition might happen pretty quickly. Yeah, because it would just be so much cheaper and so much easier than, you know, like the 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 amount of time and money and stuff that gets spent by government agencies developing planetary missions. Yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, and they get pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. Exoma- the ExoMars lander today was announced that it's been pushed back another two years. Yeah. It was originally meant to fly in like 2009 or 2011 or something like that. Yes. And it's been pushed back, pushed back. And now it's going to fly in 2020, yeah. two years after SpaceX are probably going to go. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. That just shows you the difference in rep progress rate. Although, yeah. I mean, that's a bad example of government. That is a particularly <laughs> bad example, actually, yes. Um, the um, Curiosity NASA's stuff. NASA's much, was, much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Curiosity rover was, what, a couple of billion? Yeah, I think so, about two billion, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's a lot of money, but you're going to be able to design something for a lot less Yeah. if you've got a delivery system that costs, what's the Falcon 9, like 100 million at the moment. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Falcon, Falcon Heavy. Falcon Heavy, about that, yeah, million. yeah, yeah. Um, are they going to be able to avert it, I presume with a mission to wait quickly two questions a, yes. mission, a mission to Mars or somewhere yeah are they going to be able to vertically land the booster stages and also what are the what are the kind of payloads it could deliver to someone like Europa um, um, I don't know much about the landing the, the specific numbers especially with Europa oh. but uh, they've definitely come out and said that they will be land the, the two side the side cores from the Falcon yeah. Heavy will definitely be able to land and the middle core will be have a landing attempt. So it'll probably be a bit like the one that the the last one that they basically tried as an outside attempt at trying to yeah. land, even though it's coming really really fast. It'll probably be something like that. Yes. Whereas the two outside cores seem they seem to suggest that yeah, definitely we'll be able to land them. Yeah, yeah. As long as nothing else That's, goes. That on. middle one's going to be going bloody fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's going to be screaming. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so it's going to be very cool. And who knows what they're actually going to stick on it. But it could be, if nothing else, could be some pretty cool images and like cameras and things. I'd imagine they mount a shitload of cameras just so that we get, you know, almost like a PR thing. Look how cool this is. Yeah. We're on Mars, you know. Yeah. Elon was ages ago before he even set up SpaceX was talking about um, what the he really wanted mission. to do was to put oh, a, they might a do, greenhouse they on Mars. They could do so that. He could totally do that. Um, a That's a good show. Actually. Get, I hadn't thought of Get that. his photograph that he always wanted to show people of you know a plant growing with with mars in the background yeah so you could do that they should do that they, they should, should definitely, definitely do that, do that. that's yeah. a great idea you could have a webcam sort of that keeps updating as well with like live pictures from mars and things yeah. like that it's a really cool public sort of yeah. outreach type of thing yeah and then maybe some you know seismic instrumentation some you know, maybe not seismic but whatever weather stations weather this kind of climate thing. yeah gas a gas detect look for methane methane yeah <laughs> that sort of stuff have a sniff have a sniff of the methane yeah it's yeah. cool. It's good stuff. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. See where it leads.